Greetings and salutations. Second Star Right back with more Raid Shadow Legends. And it is another weekend upon us and another event that Plarium has given us. And unfortunately, it's not a double summons chance for uh, voids or ancients or sacreds. I guess we just had voids. So regardless, it's a 10x summon draft instead of a 2x chance to get an epic or legendary. And those are the ones you really want to save your shards for. Granted, I'm still a little bit heightened from the Night Revenant one that we had last week where I finally got my miscreated monster, thank God, after all this time. So uh, I'm still I'm still pleased. So uh, these events definitely have their purpose. You know, I needed a certain champion, and because there was a 10x up, I, I got it. Um, so they do serve their purpose. So in the Sacred Order, and they just did this six weeks ago, so I don't know why they're doing it again. Um, there's other factions other than, than these, but what have you regardless uh this is what they're doing so let's go through the champions that they have on offer this weekend and see if it's something that that you really need to progress in the game is there one or two champions in here that are game changers um i mean there are but yeah let's talk about it okay so first up is frostbringer <sighs> Now, Frostbringer is a good champion, but she has problems. Okay, so I'm going to start with the good. The good is her A3. Uh, Arctic Winds places a 30% increased speed uh, buff and a 50% increased attack buff on all your allies for two turns. It's on a native five turn cooldown that with one book, you can get down to four turns. So uh, if you just have, you have this champion and you luckily enough put in your one book and get this down to four turns, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a, it's a huge help. The problem is, is that her A2 is hugely dependent on her A1, and that kind of ruins the entire champion, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so let's look at this. Her A1, Cones of Cold, attacks twice at random, with a 15% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction to buff for two turns. 100% heal uh, reduction is, is great, you know? You need someone for Spirit Keep or whatever, she can certainly help out. The 15% sucks. I can't stand, and it's it's... It's just bad. 50% on an A1 is bad. Now, you can put in five books and get that debuff chance up to 35%, but even then, I think that's too low. I mean, we do see epics that have 50% chances on their A1s. Uh, why couldn't they do that? I think this champion would be much more viable because the A2 is uh, works like this. Snow Flurry attacks three times at random, places a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns, which is good if the target has a hero reduction debuff. That's bad. If you only have 30%, 15% uh, chance of that happening, you kind of ruins the A2. Yeah, you do damage, but the whole point is to put a decreased defense uh, debuff down, and, and it's just hugely dependent on the A1. Uh, I don't know why they did this. It's not like um, they have a huge attack anyway. She's only 870, which is really low, so the attack is low already, um, even though she has a decent hit point pool. An okay defense, fantastic speed, right? She's really good speed champ, um, which you need, of course, to make this uh, A3 work. But unfortunately, the A1 and the A2 are just so underwhelming that I don't really think that she's a champion that you'd want to draw for. She's excellent early game when you're just starting out. Um, I had her on my free-to-play account when I was just starting out. She's one of my earlier uh, champions that I drew. So that was nice, but uh, I quickly outgrew her. And I think that's pretty much everyone's experience with Frostbringer, unfortunately. Okay, next, Talia. Talia is awesome. I like Talia a lot. Talia has one of my favorite things in the game, which is a 15% crit aura. I love crit rate auras uh, because it makes your gearing easier when you know that you're going to have this champion as lead. Um, granted, you have to have kind of a strong team to not go with hit points or defense or whatever as a lead, but uh, crit rate lead is awesome for gearing your other champions when you know they're going to be lead. I'm a huge fan. Um, okay, so our A1 attacks when enemy three times. Short, sweet, to the point. Really good for Fire Knight. And her attack at 1343 is not bad. She's, she, but it's her uh, her other things that she brings that makes this uh, makes her more viable. Okay, rise to duty. 25% increased attack. Wish it was 50%, but what are you gonna do? And a 30% increased crit rate. Now there we go. That's good. Buff on this champion for two turns and attacks all enemies. So, increases attack, increased crit, and she already has the crit rate aura buff if she's leading. Boom, attacks all enemies. So it's a really, really hard-hitting uh, AoE. Uh, it's really nice. Now, if you have Fenax on the same team, there's a 75% chance of also pleasing a bomb to buff that will detonate after three turns. So she could, uh, if you have Fenax, uh, place a bomb to buff as well. So that's a really devastating really devastating a2 um fenax is not part of the draw the draft this time and i don't think he was a part of the draft last time so 
He's really underrated champion, too, so it's kind of a missed opportunity. You could have built a power couple if you were drawing shards on this uh, in this event. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, E3, before I move on. Uh, awesome Presence places a counterattack buff on this champion for two turns. 75% chance of placing a weaken, 25% weaken to buff on enemies for two turns. So a counterattack plus a weaken, and you can get that weaken uh, down to five turns and up to 100% uh, with three books. It's uh, not too bad, you know, a nice little counterattack champ. Um, I wish it was a bit more than um, than a, a five turn cooldown, but uh, again, Talia, uh, not a bad champion, pretty solid all around. Not someone I'd probably draw for, but uh, a really fun champion regardless. Juliana. Uh, early in mid game, she is fantastic on the clan boss. Like, really, really good. Um, if she's like your, your first clan boss game, your first poisoner, your first HP burn, awesome. She's excellent through Brutal and Nightmare. Um, uh, solid, solid champion. She does have a drawback, however. And this drawback rears its ugly head right away on her A1. Battle Dance attacks the enemy twice. Each critical hit fills its champion's turn meter by 10%. So that's good. You think, oh, well, just build her 100% crit, and you can always crit, and you can always get your turn meter by 10%. But on clan boss, or later on when you're trying to speed tune, you're in a counter counterattack team, you want to keep this champion's um, buffs to buffs, whatever, in phase with the rest of your team, she always throws that timing off. So there is a downside to Juliana. Um, because I don't really have, I haven't built a good replacement for her, she's still in my clan boss team. Uh, and she still does a lot of damage, but... Um, this timing throws in a lot of variance, so I have I never know how much damage I'm going to do on clan boss because I never know when Juliana's going to die. I don't have any resers or whatever. I don't even have a healer on my team, so I just never know what's going to happen <laughs> with Juliana. It's just it's completely random. So uh, when you're first starting out, and this is the champion you got, she's great. But once you start getting into the the math of the clan boss, once you start getting into uh, the um, the uh, the numerical voodoo that you see murder Inc. and everyone doing um she's not gonna work for you she's not because you're not gonna you don't take those those masteries right you don't take to the turn increase masteries and she kind of has that baked into her a1 that she's gonna do you know every other turn so definite downside as far as clan boss goes for juliana for someone who has skills that are so good for the clan boss kind of unfortunate Lethal Partner, her A2, places a 30% increased crit rate buff on this champion, and then attacks the enemy twice, places a 5% poison debuff on the target for three turns, the attack is critical. It's a place. So as long as you get a crit, places a poison. It's a really, really good, uh, very reliable skill. And will ignore 50% of the target's defense when R Romero is on the same team. R Romero is not part of the draw, so no building and power couple there either. Although um, this one's not quite as good as the Fenex Talia combination. Uh, but regardless, um, it's not going to happen anyway. Uh, A3 attacks one enemy, re removes one random buff <coughs> from the target, has a 75% chance of placing an HP burn for three turns. Okay, and you can get that up to 100% uh, with books, but. You don't really need to. 75% I feel is good enough. I don't think you need to put in seven books in this champion. In fact, you can put in zero books into Juliana and she works just fine. I don't have any books in my Juliana and I'm okay with her performance. She's just one of those champions that is fine without books. You're sure you can maximize her if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it because, again, I think she's going to be a champion that you outgrow uh, relatively quickly. Um... So I, I just don't, I don't, she's a champion that works fine without books. So it's one, one less thing. It's a positive, um, it's in the positive column in the pros column for Juliana that she doesn't need to be booked. Uh, but the negatives for clan boss, if you're trying to speed tune, might outweigh that. You probably won't use her at all. Uh, who you might use instead of Juliana is uh, this guy whose name I can't really pronounce. Aothar. I want to say both vowels. Whenever I see two vowels together, I want to say both. Um, what do you, I, I don't know. Aothar. The, this guy with the skull. Okay, that, that this guy, uh, he is devastatingly strong. He was really good. Um, he's kind of like a forgotten champion almost. I think a lot of people still use him. A lot of people built him, but because he's kind of like an original champion, I think that uh, uh, the shiny new toys that may may be distracted a bit from this champion. But he's really good. Still hits really hard. His base attack at fifteen oh nine is not bad at all. Uh, his A two and his A three are devastating. Uh, he's just a very strong champion. Okay, his A1, uh, Rage, attacks the enemy twice, 15% chance of stealing a random buff from the target, which is always nice, and you actually get that up to 25% uh, chance uh, if you want to put it in five books. 
is A2, Holy Flame. Attacks four times at random. Each hit places a 5% poison debuff for two turns. When there's few champions left and all those getting hit on, on one target, devastating. Uh, really, really strong A2. And let's see. I'm just, I'm just, you can get it down to three turn cooldown, too. Three turn cooldown with five books. That's pretty awesome. And his A3 attacks an enemy, places a block cooldown skills debuff for two turns. Um, that seems uninspiring since it's a single target, but it hits really hard, which is pretty impressive to watch. Uh, both of the, um, I think all of his skills hit really hard, but uh, I think there's A2 and A3. I think both of them are in the top 10 as far as uh, damage potential goes. Very strong champion. Okay, who else is there? I don't think we have any more epics. Nope, we don't, but we do have <clears throat> a couple uh, legendaries to go through. Uh, Roshkar the Tower is up. He is a really, another really strong champion. Unkillable is his kind of claim to fame. Um, I tend to avoid him in the arena when I don't have um, any champions that can avoid damage. Uh, so he's pretty tough there. Okay, Rebuke is his A1. Attacks an enemy, 50% chance of removing one random buff from the target. Um, and you can book that twice for some extra damage if you were so inclined to do so. Uh, his Sanction is his A2, attacks an enemy, places a block cooldown skills debuff and a block buff debuff for two turns, and they can't be resisted. Okay, so uh, uh, you don't have to really, I guess you don't have to worry about an accuracy check there. That's pretty sweet. So it places, can't be resisted, block cooldown skills and block buffs. It's super strong. And you can get that down to three turns. That's kind of insane. And then, of course, Zone of Protection, his claim to fame, his... Uh, uh, you can get that down to four turns too, uh, from six turns. Places block damage buff on all allies for two turns. Huge hassle, uh, kind of a pain uh, to get around. Um, if you're going to draw and you wanted someone who's unkillable and and you think oh, uh, you know you want to make an unkillable team, uh, Roshkard is not a bad choice. Um, most people go the main eater route, but uh, you know avoid epic or a regular legendary. Uh, when you have a 10 times draft up, I don't know what, which odds are better. I haven't done that math, but I don't have any uh, unkillable champions. Um, but I also don't think that it's worth trying to get a legendary. I mean, the chances are so small, um, 0.5 percent. I just don't. I don't think it's worth it. You know, from an, from an ancient shard, maybe, maybe from sacred, maybe. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity to get an unkillable. So it's something to consider. Again, I don't think it's something I'm going to do. I only have, I think I only have two secret shards right now, so I think I'm going to save mine. Um, but Rosh card, uh, I, I look at me. I can't even. I don't even know what to say. I, I see his value. He's one of the. He's one of the top champions, as far as I'm concerned. I think he's a top champion. Um, definitely someone that that you should go for. Uh, he would make any team better. But the chances are small. It's hard for me to say. Hey, try to get this legendary. You know how it is. Okay, uh, Martyr. Again, another fantastic champion. Uh, one of the few AoE counterattack champions in the game. Uh, and she also does a defense down. She's really, really well rounded. <clears throat> Rush attacks an enemy, 45% chance, placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. So she has decreased defense on an A1. Uh, that you can get that chance with. It's 45, it gets down to 50, 60, 75% chance on an A1. Uh, for defense down. Granted, it's only one target, but um, it's not bad, right? Defense down on uh, A1, you're going to always, if you're on clan boss especially, you know you're always going to get that uh, defense down landing. It's pretty sweet. Okay, uh, Bastion of Faith places a 60% increased defense buff and a counterattack buff on all allies for two turns. Um, and that's on a four turn cooldown, they get down to a three turn cooldown, increased defense and counterattack. Not bad. Um, Martyr is pretty good with her A2 there. And then A3 Suppression is an AoE, 50% decreased attack debuff for two turns, and places a Provoke. So she's decreasing everyone's attack and provoking, and that's pretty tough. Uh, four turn cooldown, or six turn natives, you can get down to four turns with some additional damage. Uh, four books. Uh, again, she's one of the classic champions. She's a she's a go-to. Um, I pulled her recently, and she immediately <laughs> made a lot of dungeons easier for me. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. She was she's a game changer. So between her and Roshkard, you know, not bad. Those are two really good legendaries. Uh, so we have some sacreds laying around. You might want to think about it, especially since you can also pull Sir Nicholas, uh, Santa here. 
uh, a classic, another classic, along with Martyr. Fantastic. He's also a hit point based champion that actually hits hard with his A1, which a lot of hit point based champions don't, but he has a really strong modifier on his A1. So uh, he is one of the rare ones that can hit, that can do some damage. His Boreal Blade is what his A1 is called. Attacks an enemy, 50% chance of placing a freeze for one turn, and it can't be resisted. So uh, you can get that, you can't get the chance up anymore, but you can increase the damage. So you do a lot of damage, and you immobilize your target. Uh, really, really good A1 for this guy. I might not be have been as impressed uh, with that on some other champions, but on Sir Nick, it's pretty fantastic. Polar Protection is his A2. Uh, it's an AoE, but then places a shield buff on all allies for two turns. The value of the shield is equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. Uh, and the damage is based on hit points. So again, this is just something you stack hit points on. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, the results here are actually, though, pretty impressive because his modifiers are uh, scaled in a way that, that it makes it much more impressive than what we usually see from hit point based champions. Even other hit point based legendaries, like Harvest Jack, doesn't hit this hard. Sir Nick is a pretty hard hitter. Goodwill is his A3, 6 turn cooldown that you can get down to 4 turns, but pleases an unkillable buff and a 15% Tim's heal on all allies for 2 turns. So, again, both between him and Roshkard, might have a pretty good chance of getting an unkillable so maybe you should give it a shot you know if that's something you want i don't know uh again i think trying to go for a specific legendary is a fool's errand but this is one of those rare times where you could have two chances between rosh carter's or nick to get an unkillable and if that's a team something that you're missing from a team comp that you want to build something to look into venus is also on offer venus is uh she has the same skill as Dracomorph, uh, we'll get into uh, with the defense down in the uh, weaken on the same skill on an AoE. Really great uh, debuffer. So let's get into what else she does. Um, she's Void though, so you're going to have to use Void shards on this. And you might not have any left from last time we had the, uh, the uh, double summons event for Voids. I know I don't have any, so you might be a little bit light on your Voids, but uh, Venus is on offer. Pining is her A1, attacks the enemy twice, each hit has a 50% chance placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. It's always nice having poison on A1. I'm a big fan. Um, uh, you can't increase the percent hit though, but 50% on an A1, like we were discussing earlier, is really good. Blind with Infatuation is her A2. Tax all enemies, 75% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense and 25% weakened debuff for two turns. It's on a three turn cooldown natively, so you don't even have to book it uh, to get down. It's great. Having that, this, this skill is amazing. Uh, decreased defense and 25% uh, weakened is so beneficial to a team. Uh, that's why I tried to bring my Dracomorph, uh, who has the same skill, everywhere I go if I, if I can get away with it because it's just so great. And plus, if you have a Whisper, Whisper benefits uh, tremendously from, from having uh, decreased defense in a weekend. So you're making your whole team better. Um, it's, it's really good, really good skill. Burning Passion, uh, this is our A3, attacks all enemies, 50% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. She, she has poison, she has HP burn. Um, she's she's uh, Juliana on steroids uh, and she has awesome buffs and debuffs too. This is a good champion. Pure partner. So if you have a Cupidus, uh, she gets even a little bit better. Removes all buffs from all enemies with a 50% chance of granting an extra turn. Really, really strong. <laughs> that's a really strong uh, skill if you have Cupidus. So uh, that's it. Um, there's some really good legendaries in here. The Epics, I'm a bit on the fence on. I'm not a huge fan of any of them. Aether is probably the, the best one. I, it's up for debate. But the legendaries are fantastic. If you have a whole pile of sacred shards and you need an unkillable, this might be the time to do it. Uh, just just consider it. I'm not going to do it. I don't think I only have two sacred shards. I don't want to blow it on when it's not a double summons event. But Roshkard, Sir Nick, Venus. Uh, I guess Venus doesn't count. She's, you can't get her from a sacred. But um, Roshkard and Sir Nick, those are really good, right? Martyr? Come on. Uh, the legendaries are uh, on offer this weekend are really good. So if you have some sacreds and they're burning a hole in your pocket and you and you want to draw, it's not a bad time. It's not a bad time if you want to get some legendaries. The epics, I can take or leave. The legendaries are amazing. All right, so that's my two cents. Uh, let me know what you guys think uh, down below. Let me know if you draw, if you get anything good, if you're trying to get some of these unkillables. If you get them, I'd like to hear about it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 
like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Have fun.